There is one thing in Satisfactory you can use to both build a factory and drive a tractor. Want to move your factory building skills to the next level? Want to enable you to set up your next factory just the right way? Want to provide inspiration? Want to rule them all? The pattern! The pattern of five phases, each containing specific steps. And in this video, we'll apply it to both factories and tractors. We'll begin with factories first. The first phase contains four steps. Ironically, it starts at the end. You should start by asking yourself how many finished products per minute you need as the output. If this is not your first playthrough, you should have a decent idea by now. If you are a new player, don't worry about it too much, as I will show you how to build easily expandable build later. For example, let's say I expect 20 steel pipes and 22.5 steel beams per minute. As soon as you have a decent number in mind, it's time to invoke step number 2, recipes. Milestone reached, new cooking recipes unlocked. Not cooking recipes, alternate recipes, that is, if you have any. At this step, it's wise to decide which recipes to use for individual stages of the entire production chain, as it's gonna affect your answer to the next step. Since there are no alternate recipes for steel pipe and steel beam, and I have just default steel ingot recipe available, let's just move on. The third question you should ask yourself is how many basic slash raw resources you need to produce required output using chosen recipes. And by basic slash raw resources, I really mean elementary ones like iron ore, coal, limestone, etc. For me, to achieve 20 steel pipes output per minute, I need 30 steel ingots per minute and for 22.5 steel beams per minute, I need another 90 steel ingots per minute. That means I need 120 steel ingots per minute, which I can create from exactly the same number of iron ore and coal. This is a calculated input I have to satisfy. And the last step of the first phase is really about figuring out how to satisfy it, or in other words, finding the best place to execute the entire plan. There are several things to consider while choosing the right place. Apart from no-brainers like resource closeness to each other, number of deposits and their purity, Ada, would you mind giving us some examples? Examples include, but are not limited to the distance from your main base and terrain structure. Cliffs, hills and cumbersome terrain in general can make it more difficult to execute the next phases of the pattern. For my steel factory I chose a place that has enough iron and coal deposits close to each other and also it's not that far from our main base. It's wise to plan ahead, so I consider pure limestone node as a bonus that will enable us to upgrade production and create encased steel beams in the future. <sighs> that was quite a lot, wasn't it? Thankfully, the second phase is not that complex. All we need is just to dumpster dive the hell out of our base as we gather resources necessary to construct an already planned factory. And to precisely know what we are looking for, there is a handy in-game tool I use every time I'm about to build something. The calculator. Let's see, since I'm about to produce 22.5 steel beams per minute and one constructor can produce only 15 of them, it means I need 22.5 steel beams divided by production rate of one constructor and round up the result to the next whole number. Two constructors it is. Or we could use just one, overclock to 150%, but for the sake of simplicity, let's leave overclocking to another time. Now since the production ratio of steel ingots to steel beams is 4 to 1, that means I need 22.5 times 4 steel ingots, which gives us 90 steel ingots per minute calling for at least two foundries and so on. You get the idea now, and we also shouldn't forget to add in the math for steel pipes. Before we move on to the third phase, the last thing we have to do is to prepare the area. There is nothing worse than a lead stinger jumping on you from the jungle 
while you are deeply absorbed by figuring out the logistics of the whole thing. I think this step needs no further explanation. Chainsaw and a few explosives will do the job just fine. It's time to build. You can build any way you like, but I recommend sticking to two very important rules. Rule number one, manifolds. What are manifolds, you ask? It's just a row of machines, preferably the same kind of machines. Why manifolds, you ask? It makes everything easier and so far no one was able to convince me otherwise. Rule number two, build with expansion in mind. You will thank yourself later while extending your factory as soon as you need higher throughput. That's why I recommend dedicating each row to just one type of operation. For example, our first row is mining, the second row is ore processing and the third row is steel beam and steel pipe production. You might ask, why do I emphasize such an obvious thing? If you put ore processing and final steel products in same row, you commit to that structure and any later changes or expansion would be clunky. You would have to dismantle machines or change their recipe, reorganize them and completely change logistics. With the suggested approach, you can just extend individual rows as needed and the only constraint to be aware of is belt capacity, which we will talk about later. Planet is big, around 47 km squared so use them. To finish this phase and to make sure you have enough space between individual rows of machines, just place necessary splitters before machine input and mergers after machine output. Do it for every row. This way you are splitting input resources, merging output parts and splitting them again as input parts for another manifold. Oh, and don't forget to set up recipes. To complete the manifold you just created, connect machines, splitters and mergers with belts. This is the point where you could make a mistake and create a logistic issue. I see belts as constraints. Their speed limits maximum possible throughput of the manifold. Therefore, please take care when placing belts and always make sure the belt can support the throughput you expect from it. If I were to use Mark 1 belt, as the input for the manifold consisting of two foundries, I would reach the belt's 60 items per minute limit very quickly, as the second foundry would be left with the input of just 60 minus 45 equals 15 items per minute. That would cause it to run on just one third of its efficiency. That's why it's so important to consider belt limits when building or expanding the factory. The final step is connecting machines to the grid and if you did everything right, you should be rewarded with the satisfying industrial sounds of a factory coming alive. There is one last thing to do. Once your factory is functional, it does not mean you have to settle for its default look. Fixit provides you with plenty of capabilities for further customizations. As I see it, this is how it's done. We just applied 5 phases of the pattern to create a new factory. Before we do the same for the tractor, you can help this channel immensely by subscribing and liking this video. It would feel kind of satisfactory. Now the moment you've been waiting for. Plan the route. Do you really need to skate the Niagara waterfall? Or transport iron ore from grass fields to dune desert? I don't think so. Even meadows can have few obstacles your tractor might get stuck in. Of course, their AI is now improved, but you don't want to lose precious time, do you? After all, isn't transportation all about being on time? Trim that foliage down. Now it's time to build the right path. Or record it, whatever you prefer to call it. Just open the tractor menu, start recording and try your best not to fall off the cliff. Or Actually, try to fall off to see what happens, whatever makes you feel satisfied. Just make sure you will be able to complete the route, okay? To finish the recording, you have to finish the loop. As soon as you arrive at the place where you began, the recording is done. In the menu, save the path you just recorded, load and enable it. 
Now, get off that tractor. You don't want to end up falling off the cliff, do you? Finally, to make your build complete, you can place some lamps on the path for your convenience. And by that, I really mean they will help you not to get run over the tractor during your exploration at night. That's it! You made it! Unfortunately, the same can't be said about the tractor. <laughs>